Springfield, Missouri tonight. Now let's go ahead and take a look at tonight's starting lineups. For the Red Hawks from Southeast Missouri State, they will line up like this. Four guards and a forward, Cleveland, Calvin, Benton, Denzel Mahoney, and the big man tonight, the junior, William Chinga at six foot eight. For the Bears, they will go with Ronnie Russo and Daquan Miller at the guards. Then three forwards in Rhodes, Alizé Johnson, and Jordan Martin tonight for Missouri State. Ford Taft was the president of these United States. So it's been around for a little while. Rhodes steps in to jump it up with Changa. The ball is up and we are underway here with men's college basketball on the Valley on ESPN3. Tommy's Bears at a man-to-man -man starting off the game. And they almost exclusively went with zone defense when these two teams met down in Cape Girardeau. I had a chance to talk to Paul Lust before the game and he said they were gonna try and mix it up tonight knowing that Coach Rick Ray probably looked at tape and knew what to expect. I asked him, what do you do when you've played a team this closely? He says, you throw the game out. He goes, you can't expect to see anything that you saw in the previous matchup. Ronnie Russo rises and fires from three, gets knocked down. Rebound controlled by Cleveland for the Red Hawks. Simo going without one of their main weapons tonight. Trey Kellum has suffered an MCL strain he will be out for at least the next couple of games. And, Tom, that's a lot of points and rebounds out of the lineup for SEMO. Yeah, 12 and a half on average per game, seven boards. And against the Bears in the first meeting, he had 13 points, eight rebounds. So he is out of the lineup tonight, as you see. Look at Antonius Cleveland hanging in the air, but the foul over the back, William Changa picks up his first, and that'll be something to watch tonight for head coach Rick Wright. He doesn't have very many big men, so he can't afford to get them in foul trouble. Coach Ray looking for win number 10 in his tenure at Southeast Missouri State. Just his second season. He was on staff at Purdue along with Paul Lusk for three seasons, so they know each other very well, good friends. Coach Lusk said he recruited some high caliber players too to come to play for the Boilermakers. Yeah, they had the top recruiting class in the nation one year when they were together at Purdue. Paul Lusk, sixth year at Missouri State, seven years overall as a head coach, 77 wins against 93 losses. He's got a record of 51 and 30 at home here inside JQH Arena. We are still scoreless here in this one. The Red Hawks trying to score first. What a great pass falling down was Jalen Benton, but he got it to a cutting Red Hawk, and they've got the lid off the basket, the first two points for Sima. Off balance, he throws up the alley-oop and gets the basket, the assist for Benton. Antonius Cleveland, the recipient. No surprise that he would score the first two points of the night for Southeast Missouri State. There's a turnover. Daquan tried to get it back to Russo. Instead, the Red Hawks running. There's two more that time high off the window. It's Jalen Benton. Benton, the prior play was the Disher here, he is the scorer, and it's four to nothing, Simo. Benton had five points and six assists versus Missouri State down in Cape. Ronnie Russo rises and hits, and he'll have a chance for a three-point play here as Paul Lusk is about ready to wipe the slate clean. He has five new Bears standing at the table. Four of them will come in. Obadiah Church, Chris Kendricks, Austin Reuter, Ryan Kreklow, who has been a starter in every game until tonight, and then Jared Dixon, who has really been just instant offense off the bench for Coach Lusk, will wait for Ronnie Russo to see if he can convert the three-point play. Couple turnovers early. Coach Lusk did not like that. The points off turnovers four for Southeast Missouri State as Russo completes the three-point play. It's a one-point game, four to three, after Russo is able to close out the deal on the old-school three. Now some full-court pressure applied by the Bears. Missouri State in the home whites, trimmed in maroon. Red Hawks in the all-black with red numbers. The ball bobbled by Chinga out of bounds. Last touch by Missouri State's Dixon. Yeah, Dixon, good hustle to help out down low. Did knock that ball out of the hands of Chinga, but good defense, and that's what he wanted out of this bench crew. Dixon has played so well as of late to maybe necessitate a starting nod, but I think, honestly, he is so electric off the bench. Obadiah Church with the rebound now. The Bears looking to take the lead on this possession. 
Cracklow almost drug his plant foot there. Outside, Chris Kendricks, NBA range three, won't go. Obadiah Church fights through, gets the rebound, and now, Tom, they're going to have Chinga already with two fouls. That is huge. That's their only big man. You see the good block off by Church. Had the inside rebounding position. position. Chinga goes over the back to pick up his second personal foul, and it'll be Missouri State ball underneath their basket. Coach Ray takes him out, the young man from the country of Cameroon. A transfer in from Midland College. Missouri State still shooting for their chance at the lead. Kendricks out left wing to Reuter. Straight on three short. Rebound controlled by Denzel Mahoney. Mahoney looks for a three from the same spot Reuter shot from. No good. Dixon with the rebound. Oh, he had his pocket pick. The Red Hawks trying to run this one out. A fast tempo, and it's blocked by Obadiah Church, but they'll get him for the foul. Ob Church. Oh. Boy, I'll tell you, he got up. He got back defensively to help out. That was the big key. But piece of the arm right there, and Church will pick up the foul. He is one of the all-time greats. Matter of fact, he's number one in the NBC in blocks this year. He has 71 coming into tonight's action. He's just a sophomore. He's one behind Tyler McCullough. And we talked about Southeast Missouri State going without their big man, Trey Kellum. Tonight, the Bears will be without the services of Tyler McCullough. McCullough logged some great minutes and had like five rebounds in the first meeting between these two clubs. Paul Lusk said, just got to watch out for the big man right now as far as his minutes need him more later in the season than they do necessarily in the non-conference. Kreklow for three, yes! Great pass by the Bears that time. Ruder with the no-look pass to Kreklow who scores and the Bears on top by a point. Ryan Kreklow keeps his streak alive, Tom. He has got a three in every game this season. He has extended that now through this being their ninth game so far, the 2016-2017 campaign. His 13th tray of the season. He is behind Ruder, who has 20 coming off the bench this year, at least in this game. He's 13 of 29, and the answer out of the hands of Denzel Mahoney. Mahoney, a talented scorer who dropped a season-high 20 against the Ruse of UMKC. Eight to six, Red Hawks lead. Missouri State a chance to tie it or take the lead here. Kendricks wants a three. Yes, indeed, Chris Kendricks. Kendricks knocks down his ninth three of the season. The Bears take a one-point lead, nine to eight. Oh, losing the handle that time and the ball. Kreklow comes up with it. Good anticipation by Kreklow that time, the sophomore from Columbia, Missouri. Obadiah Church, the one-handed runner. He took that one right at Antonius Cleveland that time. Church at 6'7", Cleveland at 6'6", and Obi went up and over it. Had to flip it back a little bit, too. That was mag magnificent. Had to, had to put a little English on it. Cleveland slices through the defense, kind of gets an elbow into Kendricks, no call. It's 11-10, Missouri State. A different pace to this game than the one we saw down in Cape Girardeau, and there'll be a whistle and a foul. Antonius Cleveland will pick up his first personal, and that'll take out the ugly Christmas sweaters, or maybe they're cute Christmas sweaters. I suppose it all depends on your style points. Obadiah Church set to inbounds it right in front of our broadcast position as we get back to action here in Springfield, Missouri. Kreklow knocked down a three early. You can see how quickly the defense comes out for him now. Kendricks has a three. Tom, how about a four-point play? His second tray already in the game. Chris Kendricks has come to play. Came off the bench early, hits the shot from on top of the key, and is fouled on the play. Chris Kendricks has led Missouri State in scoring twice already this season. He had a start back against Air Force. Now a chance for a rare four-point play. Kendricks, an 85% free throw shooter from Willard, Missouri, and he sees that one rattle out. Rebound controlled by Jonathan Dalton. 
Dalton brings it up now for the Red Hawks. He suffered a concussion against UMKC and just now passed concussion protocol. Nice runner for Daniel Simmons. He's been a spark plug off the bench this year for Coach Ray. I tell you what, though, there's no better spark plug than a two-handed jam. It's Obadiah Church. Four points in the game for Church. Saw the seam, went through it. Nobody's going to stop that. That is his ninth dunk on the season. And yes, folks, that is a stat that we keep. Antonius Cleveland tries to throw up a three, but the foul came before that. Offensive foul, illegal pick set out front. They give it to Milos Voronish, a six foot seven Serbian, who saw good minutes against Missouri State down in Cape. Voronish, six points, four boards in the loss to Missouri State. And Missouri State with the inbounds. Daquan Miller will bring it up, covered by Jonathan Dalton. Bears having some success early, three of six from three-point land. Now that one batted out of bounds. Good effort that time, hands in the air by Denzel Mahoney. One thing they don't want to do, they relied on the three a lot at Air Force, ended up losing that game. Don't want to rely so much on the threes if they can get the shots off inside. Catch and shoot three, crack low. Well, you don't have to rely. It's not really relying on it when you don't miss, Tom. That's right. Another Kirkolo, three. His second tray of the game. He's got six points. Bears are shooting 57% from downtown. Four of seven so far here in the first half from three-point land. That makes it 19 to 12, Missouri State. Three on the way. The answer for Simo, no good out of the hands of Dalton. Daquan not letting his foot off the gas. He crosses him over and loses the handle. Daquan, the turnover. Kreklo tries to turn it right back, and he does. Kreklo got right in between Dalton and Simmons. Great individual effort that time. And how about a three? Money for Ryan Kreklo, and the Bears are on fire from outside. I may or may not have been around for that one. The Lady Bears getting a 63-54 victory over North Texas, the mean green out of Denton, Texas. It is currently 22 degrees here in Springfield, and it feels a lot colder than that, but things heating up from beyond the arc for Missouri State. Some lights out three-point shooting has them up 10. Simmons travels with it. Great defense that time by Austin Ruder and the Bears to close down the lane. Cut off the uh, baseline there, did Ruder, forcing the turnover by Daniel Simmons. That is turnover number four against the Red Hawks here in the first half. When we had a chance to talk with Paul Rusk before the game, he talked about he thought the Red Hawks would really try to come in and take charge in the post, try to involve Cleveland and Kellum, and without Kellum in the lineup, it's been a very different play. There's a great block, though, but effort by Kendrick saves it back in, so he wants the three. That one pins up, pinballs out. He had to take that one up against the shot clock. He did. It was down to two when he got the ball and had to put it up quickly. Bears been mixing up the defensive looks they've shown. The Red Hawks so far tonight after going almost exclusively with zone and Jordan Martin ties it up. Jordan Martin, the Hazelwood Central standout, gets a some snow maybe coming. Bears five of nine from three point range. Those five have come from two players, Krecklow and of course, Chris Kendricks. And that last one really shouldn't even count. That was one that you just had to get up in front of the shot clock. 1-3-1 one, one zone now by Simo against the Bears, trying to stop that outside shot. Quick inside-out game. Miller now has it on the right wing, loses the handle, out to Kreklo for three, and he misses. That's his first miss. And it looks like Milos Varanish, the six foot seven from Serbia, the forward with the rebound. Bears before that were out rebounding Simo seven to four. After the break, Krecklow reaches in, and it's swatted out of play by Martin. Return to Cinder. 
Bears this season, 86 blocks in nine games. Almost. That can't be right. Nope, 37 blocks. There you Wrong go. category. Still a lot. Almost four games. And it's not just one guy. As Martin may get credit for a second one there. Alizé brings it up. Ruder from downtown. No, it rims out. Rebound controlled by William Changa. Changa back in the game with two fouls. He picked two early fouls up in the first three minutes of this one. Jalen Benton had picked up his dribble. Kick out to Veronish. He'll drive on Johnson and think better of it. Bears in a man defensively. Six on the shot clock. A three by Veronish. No good. Rebound pulled down by Martin. Missouri State still up 10. Neither team has scored out of the break. 22 to 12. Handoff. Daquan. Two if it goes. No. There was a little shove. Down goes Martin. Play continues on. Simmons with the rock. The feed down low. That ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Southeast Missouri State. Changa unable to battle his way past Alizé Johnson. Chenga in there with two fouls. Now he checks out for Simo. Tajidi into the ball game for the first time. The freshman guard from West Haven, Connecticut, by way of Tennessee Preparatory Academy. Antonius Cleveland, I don't know if this young man's going to get to come off the floor to, tonight. They need him every minute, and the Bears have done a good job to keep him in check. Only four points so far for Cleveland, and right as I say that, He's got an answer. He's got six now. It's 22 to 14, Missouri State. They've got the lead in the ball. 1,174 career points for Mr. Cleveland. Eight career double-doubles. And he's got 12 career 20-point games as Kreklo collides with the guy, but the foul actually came before that. There was a reach-in called against Jalen Benton. You'll see it in any... Oh. Lowers his shoulder there after the whistle. And Kreklow will go to the line here and shoot free throws. 9-12 to play in the first half. You saw Rick Ray on the sideline for SEMO. Ryan Kreklow averages six points per game so far on the season. Kreklow a perfect five of five from the free throw line. Rockbridge High School in Columbia, Missouri. Had 51 made threes coming into tonight. He's now got a career of 54. And his streak at the charity stripe continues. Tonight now with the three will also mean going back to last year, he's got a 14-game streak in which he has made a, at least one three-pointer in every game. And he gets a nice round of applause from the Bears faithful here inside the queue. Ronnie Russo takes his place. So Paul Lusk has his starting backcourt back on the floor, and they'll apply some full court pressure here to Taj Eady. Kreklow sits just four points away from his career high of 15 set earlier this year against Fontbonne. A lot of people set some highs against Fontbonne earlier this year. Bears went over the over the 100 point plateau in that game. Three too strong that time. Alizé Johnson, a big rebound, his third. Bears are running. The dish down to Obadiah Church, and he throws it back in. Red Hawks able to come away with it, though. They're going to keep chucking up threes. They are not having much luck hitting, though. And there's a foul underneath against Simo. You get Milos Veronis. That's his second. You see him get tied up with Church, and he gets the foul. Eight team fouls against Simo. Tom only two against the Bears, so we will walk to the other end of the floor. Rick Ray not happy with what he's seen so far as his Tim's team still trails by 10. Well, this has not been a strength of the Bears this season, free throw shooting, and especially not for Obadiah Church, a 57% shooter. 12 of 21 on the season, but Obi gets that one to go home. A member of the 2016 All-MVC freshman team. already has got one big dunk in this one. Came into tonight with 506 career points. He's got five points. Makes that free throw. He's got six.
They worked on that during shoot around today. Uh, coach was a little upset at the beginning of their free throw shooting drills. He said, you guys got to start concentrating a little more. Well, and every coach has a different philosophy. And I, you know, Tom, obviously you spend a lot of time with the Lady Bears as there's a tie up. Possession arrow will keep the ball with Simo. I don't know what Coach Harper's philosophy is, but I used to spend some time with former Bears coach, now SIU coach Barry Henson. Barry's philosophy on free throws was we don't work on that in practice. That's you time. You figure out how to shoot a free throw. We've got offense, defense. We've got other things to figure out when we're practicing. Yeah, everybody's different on that. And of course, they ended up losing a game, Valpo, because of poor free throw shooting. 13 of 21, game they should have won, as you look at the stats, but free throw shooting cost them. Jump stop. Cleveland in the lane. No, Johnson with another rebound. Alizé Johnson has been held scoreless in this game, but he's still doing work on the glass. Four poles for Alizé. Hasn't gotten involved in all those three points the Bears have been making so far. Church calls for it on the near side block. Rhodes skip pass to Dixon, drives the baseline and is fouled. You see the end result there, Jared Dixon, that's his money shot, that little runner. Right at campus facilities and then the event will move out to the city that never sleeps, Las Vegas. As Jared Dixon gets ready. For a couple of free throws here, Dixon knocks down the first one. Jared Dixon, an 83% free throw shooter. He's 11 of 13 on the season. Young man from Lee Summit West High School out of Kansas City, Missouri. He makes them both. Bears with their about as big a lead as they have had now, pushing it up to 14 points here. And Simo is 0 for 5 on their last five field goal attempts. They can't have another empty possession here. Dixon gets called for a push, trying to body up on Antonius Cleveland. Yeah, and there was some good help defense there. Nearly got the steal, did the Bears, but the push from behind catches Dixon, his first foul of the game. Only the third team foul against Missouri State, nine against SEMA, only three against the Bears. Cleveland calling for it. Good defense again, just like Tom said, the Bears laying out, trying to get the free ball on the floor, and they come up with it. Simo shooting 28% from the floor. Meanwhile, the Bears at 50%. Church down to Alizé, but he pushed off. Alizé has been held scoreless in this one so far. Thought he was finally going to get his first bucket, but he cleared out the defender to make room. As the pass was coming to him, used his off arm to clear out the defender just out of our reach. You, know, you see him flying. That was Cleveland going back the other way, away from the basket, and that's a foul against Alizé. Taj Edi brings it up now for Southeast Missouri State. Outside, three ball for the Red Hawks. Short, rebound controlled again by Johnson. And Alizé Johnson just doing a great job on the boards. Five rebounds tonight. Dixon now with it to Rhodes. They work a little motion at the top here. Church calls for it, but Rhodes will pull up a long two if it goes. No good. Rebound grab by Taj Edey. Edey finally pulls it back. Nice work that time by the Red Hawks, but there's an offensive foul. Charge called. Take a look at Obadiah Church stepping in the lane and taking the charge. Great positioning down low. It was Dalton who came in, decided not to try and shoot over the uh, Bears' big man, and then he takes the charge against Dalton. Great job there. Another turnover. That is the sixth turnover for the Red Hawks. Again, shooting percentage below 30% for Simo, and they trail by 14. You saw Paul Lusk there for a moment on your screen. Lusk 3-1 and one all time against Simo. 1-1 one one at home as his Bears turn it over again. They've had 14 turnovers down in Cape Girardeau. They're already to half that number. We've got five minutes to play in the first half. 
Another rebound for Alizé Johnson. Kreklo drives in, kicks it out. Chris Kendricks for three, leaves it short. Kreklo had a chance at the rebound, and he pulls it in just inside the out-of-bounds line. A great pass from Obadiah Church finds Chris Kendricks attacking the rim for two more. Kendricks, good start to this game. Eight points for the junior from Willard, Missouri. He's shooting 50% from the floor. Three of six so far in this one as we near the five-minute mark of the first half. Simo showed like they were going to go for the three, then a dribble drive by Simmons. They are sent back the other way. Missouri State now. Dixon walks it up, crosses over his man, and he'll get called for the foul. Offensive foul that time. Tried to penetrate, tried to cut two defenders right at the free throw line right there. Yeah. He runs over Calvin. Good positioning there. Even though he appeared to be moving, he was in front of Dixon and the foul charge to get the against the Bears sophomore Johnson meanwhile seven rebounds he is the chairman of the boards in this one seven boards no points so far for Alizé Johnson surprising considering the numbers that he has put up four double doubles on the season last time the Bears had somebody with production like that was a young man in his freshman season Kyle Weems and he is one of the Bears best now the ball, no foul called, out of bounds off of Kreklo. It'll stay with the Red Hawks. 16 seconds on the shot clock. That's a good comparison, Weems and Alizé. Alizé's got three inches on Kyle Weems, but two guys that get it done, they're playmakers. Yeah, Kyle always played bigger than that 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, six frame. Here's a little half-court trap by the Bears. They drop back into a 2-3 zone. Oh! And that's Cleveland uh, taking care of that zone all by himself. That is a zone buster. Cleveland, the one-handed almost windmill jam. Kreklo loses the rock, and the Red Hawks out and running, out on the wing. Tajidi kicking around in the corner. Cleveland for three, too strong. Rhodes with the rebound and then can't control it. Red Hawks take it back. Jamal Calvin kicks it out. Corner right in front of the Bears bench. Kendricks, I think, got, got away with a little grab there. And then Rhodes with the rebound. And this one's a no-doubter as the Bears are going to slow it down here. Eight assists on their nine made baskets. That's a very good number. Nine field goals made in this one so far for Missouri State as they've got the ball. 327 to play until the intermission. Another cutting Chris Kendricks, but great anticipation that time by Simo's Jamal Calvin. Late decision by Alizé to make that pass. He was open for a second prior to that, and it was stolen away by Simo. Alizé Johnson had the longer arm that time. He's the last one to touch it out of bounds, and Antonius Cleveland will inbounds it. Obadiah Church checks back in. Mr. Johnson has a chance to catch his breath on the Bears' sideline. Cleveland takes it all the way back to the Bears' free throw line. Playing for the Red Hawks football team there as a quarterback. You never, everybody's always looking for a good quarterback. Tom. There's no deny that. Taj Edey with the rock, drives on Kreklo, throws it up and over Church. There's a foul underneath. Going the other way, it looks like Simo's Denzel Mahoney will pick up a foul. Mahoney, the number two scoring freshman in the Ohio Valley Conference, picks up his second personal. A lot of young players on this team. And the Bears have been in the bonus, Tom, for what seems like forever. But you get a look at the foul over the back on Kendricks that time. Good block off by the junior Kendricks that time. Kendricks knocks down the first free throw. He's got two three-pointers in this game. That's 74 career threes for Chris Kendricks. He is now over 600 points for his career, 597 coming into tonight. He had nine points, now 10, and Chris Kendricks has joined the 600-point club here at Missouri State. 
The Bears now twice the score, 32-16 on top of Southeast Missouri State. Jamal Calvin gives it up to Simmons. He'll drive, shoots over Kendricks, who I thought was going to get a block, but it's all about timing sometimes. Simo gets two more. Under two and a half minutes to play. Church calls for it. Rhodes can't get it to it. Kreklow downloaded Church for the dunk. An alley-oop from Kreklow to Obadiah Church. Great feed, perfect timing, and Church with a two-handed slam. Obadiah Church, 10 dunks on the season. He's got eight points and two rebounds, and the Bears are up big, 34-18. Got a foul called on the backside here. They give the foul to 10, Missouri State's Jared Rhodes. That's his first, the team's sixth. And Austin Reuter will come back into the game for Missouri State, the Nixon native. And all the three-pointers we've seen shot tonight, it's hard to believe that Reuter doesn't have one of them. He hasn't even attempted a triple yet. That ball out of bounds. Missouri State, it's their ball. Boy, watch this as Cleveland climbs the back of Reuter. They threw it up above the rim. He got it and then lost it out of bounds right in front of Reuter. Daquan Miller really pestered all the way up floor that time. Good defense by Jonathan Dalton. Here's Cleveland, a drive. He steps through, but they'll call the foul on the floor prior to the shot. Cleveland very tough to stop. And he defensively picks up the steal on one side, and he goes offensively. He is tough to stop. He gets to the line here, try to add to his eight points. Paul Luss collected his 75th win as the head coach of the Bears with a victory over North Dakota State University. Just a couple of weeks ago, now Antonius Cleveland at the line, the All-Ohio Valley Conference preseason pick, knocks it down. Of all the parts of his game that are just phenomenal, Tom, he's only about a 60% free throw shooter. Yes, yeah, 61%. He shoots 60 or 55% from the floor. You talked about it. He makes the second one here. And Cleveland had 20 points and four rebounds against Missouri State down at Cape Girardeau. You talk about Peoria being a tradition-rich basketball town. Cleveland from Memphis, Tennessee, and there is a lot of talent in Memphis as Ronnie Russo drives the lane, loses the ball out of bounds. It'll go to the Red Hawks. Memphis is just such a recruiting area. A lot of coaches spend a lot of time down there. Well, especially Southeast Missouri State, that's a great area for them. You know, there is obviously used to be Memphis State, now the University of Memphis there as well. So it's a great basketball community. Great pass by Cleveland outside and a three knocked down for Daniel Simmons. His eighth made three of the season. And don't look now, but they're within 11 of the Bears with one minute to play in the first half. I was trying to make sure that is that is only their second made three, Tom. They're two of 11 from outside. Under a minute to go, Johnson, double team comes to him. He throws it away. Red Hawks running a step through for Simmons, and he loses it. <laughs> they call double dribble. Just out of control, ragged. That time just moving too fast. 13, now 14 turnovers for the Bears. That now matches the number they had in the previous meeting. That is not going to make Paul Lust very happy at halftime. And a Bear we have not seen for a couple of games. Robin Thompson checks into the lineup now, wearing number one. Robin Thompson, a 6'6 sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri. Went to high school at MICDS. The foul's going to be called on Missouri State's 10. Jared Rhodes, that's his second. He's picked both of those up here in about the last two minutes. Well, Dalton actually picked yes, that Dalton up for Simos. Rousseau goes to the line for the free throws. He's had a hard time handling the pressure of Southeast Missouri. Turned the ball over a few times. Hits nope. the free throw here. He had foul trouble against ORU in the Bears' last game. The 77% free throw shooter came to Missouri State from State Fair Community College. He didn't get to play against SEMO the last time. He was still out 
with a concussion and going through the notorious concussion protocol that now has become such a part of the vernacular for talking about sports in America. 30 seconds to go as Taj Edey goes to work. Kick out to Dalton. He drives back to Edey. 21 seconds. He'll rise from the free throw line extended. Russo, big rebound for RR3. I haven't set on a nickname for him yet. I'm waffling between RR3, which is one Art Haynes likes, and I also like R23. <laughs> He's got it with five seconds. With three, he drives left-handed, goes up and in! Who cares what you call him? He's money! Russo beats the buzzer, and the Bears lead. Ready begins second half action. Coverage on ESPN of college basketball continues here from Springfield. Missouri State brings out their original starting five, Martin Miller, Rhodes, Russo, and Alizé Johnson. I think they'll last more than two minutes this time. You think? Say last time, Paul Luss saw him turn the ball over twice and immediately had five new players to put in before Roddy Russo got fouled on a scoring trip to the basket. Strong move up that time by Martin. Out of bounds, last touch by the Bears. 3-2 zone by the Red Hawks, pays some dividends there. Bears putting up a forced shot, knocked it out of bounds as well. Simo gets it back. Simo shooting 28% from the floor in this one as Antonio Antonius Cleveland tries a high percentage shot. Good mid-range jumper, but he can't get that to go. Cleveland has 10 points to lead all score or lead his team in scoring. Kreklow's 11 leads all scorers in Missouri State. Russo, deep three, yes! Roddy Russo, Russo for three. In double figures now with 10 points for the junior college transfer from Cincinnati, Ohio. The Bears now with three players all over the double-digit scoring mark. A three-point answer for Southeast Missouri State, no good, by Jamal Calvin. Johnson with his ninth rebound already. A night where he can't score, he should be right at another double-double. He's got four this season. He's, I believe, had a string of three in a row. Leads the Valley in rebounding. He's got his average right now nine, and a lot of basketball left to be played. See the bench points in this one for Missouri State, that 31-point mark. So huge, and you see what Rick Ray is having to work with tonight without Trey Callum without some of his players, a pretty short bench tonight for Southeast Missouri State, meant they were in for an uphill battle as they got off the bus. Foul called against Simo, puts Rhodes on the line for a couple here. He has not scored in the game. Jordan Martin, another starter that has not scored, along with Alizé Johnson. So three of the starters, why the bench has been so important. He scored now, Tom. He averages five points and three rebounds a game. He makes his first free throw. Rhodes only about a 33% free throw shooter. He's five of 13 at the line this season. Wait for the second one here. Rhodes had a great night 10 nights ago in Cape Girardeau. He had 10 points and three rebounds against Simo. That was his first career start was against these Red Hawks. Nice to see a 33% shooter, knocks down two free throws. That's what Missouri State needs. You talked about the free throw shooting woes for this Bears team against Valparaiso and against some other competition. Not three, tonight. Three-pointer too strong. There's 10 for Johnson. He skies for the rebound. Alizé Johnson, 10 rebounds in the six foot nine. Big man trying to show his handles. They say nobody else touched it, and it's the Red Hawks ball. Alizé taps on his chest, says, that was on me. Here it is. Tries to go up, went after it, they said. And they said it went off of him. I didn't see it. I think the Bears fans were kind of looking for a foul there behind us, but they don't get any love. Not for that one. 43-23, the Bears' lead is 20. Red Hawks here, their superstar Cleveland comes back out. Gives it to Denzel Mahoney, the super freshman. Calvin, the feed, Chinga, the finish. William Chinga had foul trouble most of the first half, and here's a takeaway. Simo steals the rock. They feed down low to Cleveland. Up and underneath, Alizé Johnson for two more. Cleveland with a dozen. And it's 43-27, Missouri State.
They had 10 steals in the first half, pick up another one there. 11 steals for SEMO in the game. And they've got some crazy numbers when it comes to that, Tom. SEMO is ranked in the top 20 in the nation in turnover margin. Total steals, forced turnovers and steals per game. It's something the Rick Ray's ball club does really well. Now Jordan Martin gets off the schneid. He gets his first bucket of the night. Air ball by his teammate, Martin, right place, right time. The put back in for his first basket. Man-to-man -man defense by the Bears. Good kick out. Now Cleveland spots up from three and snaps the net. Antonius Cleveland, his first three-point make. He's got 15 now to lead all scores, and they've cut the difference down to 15. Scored 20 against the Bears in the first meeting 10 days ago. Daquan Miller kicks it out. Johnson for three. Hits off the heel. No, Cleveland with the rebound. Cleveland with 15 points, two boards. Here come the Red Hawks. Three for Benton. No, Johnson. He may not, may not get any points tonight, but he is going to have all sorts of rebounds. He's got 11 now. Look at Ronnie Russo showing the handles. Passes back to Rhodes. Comes back to Russo. He'll spot up from three. No. Ball loose. Finally, the Red Hawks' William Chenga gets it. Yaounde Cameroon, William Chinga. Cleveland, too much from long range. Rebound to Rhodes, and Russo will walk it up. All right, Tom, he didn't put five in this time, but Paul Luss does have four new players ready to check in for Mo State. There's a stop and pop. Look at Russo. Kind of threw a little Michael Jordan in there. The leg kick and the finish for Ronnie Russo. He gets some separation. He's only 5'10", plays a lot bigger than that. He can go up and above and get a shot off. Russo has the Bears' high water mark with points. He's got a dozen now. Kick out to Mahoney for three. Denzel Mahoney knocks it down. Mahoney had 12 points against Northern Kentucky in the talented score. Missouri State. Lost to earlier this season. That's who's up next for the Red Hawks here in the Las Vegas Classic. I tell you what, Tom, I think the Bears are looking forward to a possible rematch with DePaul. That's one that Coach Lusk and these Bears would like to have a chance to hit the reset button on. Kendricks contested three short. Rebound controlled by Simmons. They'll have a tough one with USC in their first game in Vegas. USC is 9-0 right now southern cal playing some great basketball former coach at florida gulf coast dunk city dunk Remember that? city he's at usc and got them off to a good start this year sweet 16 darlings a couple years ago when you he do was there. that at a small school look at this hustle by dixon the feet ahead to kendricks and he'll go ahead and finish at the rim he was looking for the dunk the defense got back so he goes ahead and shoves it up there with the left hand Two more, Chris Kendricks now with a dozen. Milos Varanish calling for it on the left block. Instead, they'll stay on the perimeter. Simmons knocks down another three. Simo five for 18 from beyond the arc. The Bears, meanwhile, six of 16. Daniel Simmons, nine of 30 from three-point land now, and there's an unforced error. It had been a while since we talked about turnovers for Missouri State. That is their 16th. Maybe the only stat they didn't want to lead tonight is Chris Kendricks. School. It switched to Missouri State Normal School, third district, in 1881. And, of course, SEMO Teachers College in 1919. So both of them were teachers' colleges or normal schools back in the day. All the way back to 1911 when they first played basketball against one another. Milos Varanish blocked by Church. Obadiah Church, another block, and it's taken away. Chris Kendricks with it. Here come the Bears. Obadiah Church now with at least 72 career blocks. That may have given him the tie with his teammate, Tyler McCullough, who's out tonight. Dixon baseline drive. 
over the rim and he'll get a chance at the free throw line. You could tell there was a pause there waiting for block charge, block charge, block charge, which is it? It's a block. He cuts in. Boy, that could have gone either way, but they call the foul against the Red Hawks and Dixon goes to the line. You think you think basketball officials and football officials ever get together and commensurate about the block charge versus like pass interference or holding? Has to be the most discussed call in basketball, especially at this level, the college level, with the uh, area under the hoop now that they have to worry about. Jared Dixon now with three points. He's a perfect three of three at the line tonight for Missouri State, a member of the 2016 Missouri Valley Conference all-freshman team. Jared Dixon, a sophomore guard, who averages about nine points and two rebounds per contest. Perfect four for four. Church, Kreklow, Kendricks, Dixon, and Ronnie Russo the third on the floor, and they apply some full court pressure against the Red Hawks. Chenga with it. Hands it back off, and they'll bring it back around the horn. Dalton between the circles. He drives between the trees, tries to kick it out, and he stepped on the line. Turn it over to Missouri State. That'll just be the 10th turnover of the night for Simo. Yeah, Bears with 17, Simo with 10. Simo's also picked up 12 steals in the game. So Tom, Missouri State and Southeast Missouri State both taking part tonight and for the next week and a half in the in the Las Vegas Classic. Who else is in this tournament, this holiday tournament? Sure, Wyoming, USC, DePaul, as we had mentioned, yeah. Cornell, Troy, Chicago State, and of course, the Red Hawks. Ooh, Ronnie Russo bailed out by the blocking call. Simo not really thrilled with that one. Looked like the big man had got there and planted, but instead, Russo will go to the line here. They get William Changa with the foul. That's his third. That's his first foul since he had to sit the majority of the first half. He picked up two quick ones. Russo snaps the first one home. Yeah, Wyoming is seven and two. USC nine and zero. Oh. DePaul five and four. Troy is six and four. Those are the teams with winning records along with the Bears. And DePaul five and four. The Bears have played DePaul already. Chicago State, who is the Bears' next opponent, just got done playing DePaul in this event and got doubled up like 100 to 50. And that's who the Bears will face in the second half of another home doubleheader Monday night here at JQH Arena. 53-36, our score. Simo, the down low pass to Chenga. Kendricks tries to swat it. There'll be a foul call here. They're going to give the foul to Obadiah Church with 11 defense. Three block shots in the game. The Bears have six. Three by Jordan Martin, three by Obadiah Church. And that means that Obadiah has passed Taylor McCullough as the first free throw for William Chenga goes in. That's his second free throw attempt of the night. Chenga two for two at the charity stripe. Make that three of three, the big man from Cameroon by way of Midland College. You see Alizé Johnson. Smaller lineup on the floor right now for Missouri State with Kendricks and Kreklow. Kendricks, bullet pass. Martin tries to use the window. No, tipped out. Stepped out was Antonius Cleveland. Give the ball back to Missouri State. Yeah, zone defense by Simo again. The Bears got it down exactly where they wanted to get it to Jordan Martin underneath. And then a game of volleyball ensued. Won by the Bears as Simo steps out of bounds. Those three blocks that you mentioned, partner, now puts Obadiah Church up to 74 career blocks. That makes him number nine all-time passing former Bears great Monwell Randall. He passes Mr. Randall, played for the Missouri State from 2000 to 2004. He's next eyeing Scott Brakebill, the Bolivar shooter who had 89 career blocks in his time at Missouri State. This is in a year, less than a year and a half, yeah, mind that's, you, that's that he's got over 70 blocked shots. 
what a weapon he has been defensively. Game changer on the defensive end, and now nobody touched that. Antonius Cleveland is pleading that it was last touched by Missouri State. That one was just thrown into backcourt, and it's a Red Hawk turnover. They're 12. Telling the official, hey, I would have gone after it had I known it wasn't tipped. It was tipped. They didn't see it. They didn't call it. Missouri State with the ball. 12th turnover now for the Red Hawks. Three-pointer, crack low, no, too much that time. Rebound pulled down by Jamal Calvin. Red Hawks running, Cleveland step through, three-pointer, no, too strong. Changa pulls it down and brings it back out. Simmons from the corner now, no, and the three-pointers will just not fall. That's a foul or it's traveling. Someone will have to make up their mind and they'll say it's a foul, a push on Missouri State. Kendricks will pick it up. His second, only the second team foul on Missouri State here in the half. Chenga doing Yeoman's work on the boards on this series. Four rebounds now. I think three of those came here in the last uh, minute or so. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if all of them didn't come here in the second half. Both of these teams really in a kind of an offensive funk right now. As we've got a three minute scoring drought as far as field goals go for both of these clubs. Coaches say that's great defense. Yeah, that's one way to turn it. There's a kick ball by Kendricks as he sends it over to Rick Ray. Rick Ray, three years as a head coach at Mississippi State, spent time as an assistant coach at Clemson, Purdue, Northern Illinois, Indiana State, University of Nebraska, Omaha, just to name a few. Coach Ray has climbed his way up the ladder in his second year as the head coach of Southeast Missouri State. 46 and 90, his career mark as a head coach. Simmons for three again, and he keeps putting them up there, but they're not falling. Martin the rebound. Ray off that Gene Cady coaching tree, and that is a huge tree with lots of branches. Simo is five of 21 from three-point land now, and now they're going to say Martin shoved the offensive foul against Chenga. Use the off arm there to separate himself from the defender picks up the foul that is his first personal right there with the call by the official and missouri state turns it over that is their 19th turnover i'm going to start looking for season yeah, highs on turnovers to, i don't i didn't want you to but i think you're going to have to you bring up that gene katie coaching tree so paul lusk is on it and obviously so is Rick Ray. Then you've got Alan Major, the head coach at Charlotte. Conzo Martin comes from that family. Now at Cal, Matt Painter at Purdue. Austin Parkinson, the women's coach at IUPUI. Kevin Stallings at Pittsburgh. Bruce Weber at Kansas State. And oh, Steve Lavin, who used to be a big name head coach, who now is just, you know, an analyst, kind of one of us talking heads. So a uh, pretty illustrious list of names on that list. Russo puts up another one. That one won't fall. Cleveland with the rebound and a foul as they fight for it might be a couple in a row here on Jordan Martin and it is it will be his third the team's fourth as you see him and Cleveland all knotted up together Martin threw his hands up but the foul nonetheless Russo and Reuter Trying to slow up the Red Hawks here as Jamal Calvin walks it up. Cleveland drives on Russo. He steps around and wow, what a great unselfish play. He leaves it for Mahoney. He missed the first one, but makes the second one. The offensive rebound and the second chance points for the number two scoring freshman in the Ohio Valley, Denzel Mahoney. Mahoney now with eight points. Bears lead is 13, Russo drives, and there's a foul with 8.41 to play. See Russo collides that time with Jamal Calvin. Calvin, that's only his first personal. Obadiah Church checks back in, so apparently that wrist yeah. or thumb, whatever we were concerned with early on, not a problem. Is Missouri State's number five checks back into the contest. Able to shake off that injury. 
Inbounds comes to Chris Kendricks. And he throws it away over to the scorer's table. Russo tried to come back to get it. They'll talk about it at center court. Another one of those turnovers, Tom. They've now hit the 20 turnover plateau. Six more than their season high also against Southeast Missouri. They had 14 against the Red Hawks. They had averaged just nine, nine turnovers a game this year. Well, and let me put this in perspective to people that don't see a lot from Missouri State is here they come on the break. Kendricks now will stop, shoot from three, no. Johnson doesn't go for the rebound and we've got an injury back behind the play. William Chenga is hurt. He slowly hobbles back to the Southeast Missouri State bench. The point I was starting to make, Tom, is Missouri State in the nation is the third best team at turnovers per game. They, there are only two teams in the country in Division I men's basketball that have a lower turnover average per game of about 9.3, 9.4 than Missouri State. So Southeast Missouri State turns them over 14 times in Cape Girardeau a season high. Now they've turned them over 20 times tonight. To go along with 12 steals that the Red Hawks have, and that's something they're listed among the nation leaders in. Three ball from the corner, yes! Mahoney knocks down another one. Don't look now, it's a 10 point game and just under eight minutes to play. Mahoney, three of six from three point land. As Tom said, 10 point affair, 53-43. Four minutes since the last field goal by Missouri State. Yeah, they need to seal the deal with some points on this one. Russo calls from a screen from Church. Stops, pops, leaves it short, tries to get his own rebound. And Russo touched it last. Russo touches it, it goes out of bound to the Red Hawks, 7.29 to play. was a double digit difference. Yes. There was as much as 10 or 12 rebounds difference between the Red Hawks and these Bears. Simo a chance to cut the differential to single digits with a make of any kind here as you see Southeast Missouri State outscoring the Bears 20 to 15 here in our second half. Jalen Benton picks up his dribble. They go down low. Mahoney has been a beast, and he does it again. Denzel Mahoney, the end one, and it gets a standing ovation from Trey Kellum and his teammates on the Red Hawks bench. Kellum with a big basket there, playing much smaller than the uh, posts of Missouri State, just 6'4", but able to uh, finish inside. 6'4", freshman from Florida, came in averaging 11 and a half points a game and he now has 13 for the Red Hawks. He's the team leader in free throws made and attempted, and he shows you a little bit of that there. So he converts the three-point play. Obadiah Church checks back in to the game for Paul Lusk. Mahoney now with six straight double-figure scoring games for Southeast Missouri State. He had 14 points and four rebounds against these Bears down in Cape 10 days ago. Missouri State needs an answer here. They see their lead fall to just nine. Kreklo, the head fake on what would have been a deep three. Great pass, threading the needle as Daquan Miller Dixon puts it through. Church redirects one. The Bears are out and running, and Dixon gets tackled at midcourt. Wow, what a block on the defensive end for Missouri State. Here's the pass and the foul at midcourt. Kreklo catches and fires, but the whistle had already blown. But a block defensively. Missouri State now with seven blocks in the game. Jalen Benton has been called for the personal foul. Here's the block and again. Obadiah Church with his fourth block of the game. He may have 80 before this one's over. We still have uh, six and a half minutes. Came in with 71. Daquan Miller to Russo. Back to Day Day for three. Yes, indeed. Daquan Miller knocks it down. Missouri State's lead is back to a dozen. Antonius Cleveland. Rises, fires, too much, and Dixon with the rebound now. Dixon with six points and three rebounds off the bench. 
Russo covered up by Milos Varanish. Kreklo not going to stop until he finishes at the rim. Kreklo takes Antonius Cleveland off the dribble for two more. Kreklo now with 13. That's his first basket of the second half. He had 11 in the first. Boy, that was a tough play for Simo as Jalen Bilton got caught in traffic, spun and handed it off to Milos Varanish, who scores and will shoot one here. Varanish in traffic, a couple white shirts there and the hands of Ronnie Rousseau getting a piece of that shot, putting Varanish at the line for one here. Good to see Paul Lusk feeling a bit better tonight. He's been battling the flu all week. Out here tonight, able to give it a go with his team in his first game of the Las Vegas Classic. Milos Varanish completes the three-point play. You get a good look at the former star of Southern Illinois University back in his playing days. Now here guiding the Missouri State Bears. Started off his playing career at Iowa, sustained a serious knee injury. It was back in the day when knee injuries weren't like they are today. You could fix them. Where you could go back. through the drive through and come back to playing next week. Right. He was virtually done and uh, able to come back with SIU, not the same as he was when he started his career at Iowa. But still a very, yes. very good career in the Missouri Valley at Southern Illinois. He's got a former Bear on his bench with him, Keith Pickens. They're both up walking the sidelines right now. As you take another look at the drive, Russo trying to play through the contact, feed to Church, goes out of bounds. But Missouri State able to keep it here with 5-11 to go. Rick Ray wanting his team to storm back here. They had cut it to nine. Now do they have Chenga for a foul here in a one and one? Yeah, Dixon with the catch as the defender was coming at him, running at him. Dixon ran right past him as a glance. They went off of each other, a little contact. The foul called, and Dixon goes to the line for the free throws here. I'm a little confused. They say number 11 had committed the foul for Simo. If that's true, it's Eli Sample. We haven't seen him on the floor tonight. That would be a first but I don't see an 11 standing anywhere on the court right now. So I well, wonder 11 shooting. I think they got the shooter and the foul flippity floppity there. Yes. Maybe the foul was on 11 or 12 Jamal Calvin. Alizé Johnson ready to check back in as Dixon knocks down another at the free throw line. Dixon. On a run, six of six from the free throw line. Not a miss as Alizé comes back in. And the Bears on a run as well. There's nothing better than to have somebody talk about how poor their free throw shooting is as a team. And then to what get do they back. do, Tom? Yep, 19 for 20 from the line. Yep. Just to make us look foolish. And that's okay. Mahoney drives and is fouled by Kreklo with just under five minutes to play. Red Hawks, of course, out of the Ohio Valley Conference. They were preseason picked number six in the West Division of the Ohio Valley. Meanwhile, the Bears in the Missouri Valley, they've got nine of ten teams right now with 500 or better records in the Valley. That just shows you how tough that conference is. Well, and there's some tough games going on in the Missouri Valley Conference tonight. Drake is playing Iowa State in the High V Big Four Classic. Iowa State leads 32 to 31 with three minutes to go in the first half. Oklahoma State is thumping the Shockers. Wichita State down 34 to 19 to the Cowboys. Loyola got a win in overtime tonight, 81 to 75. Northern Iowa fell in that High V Big Four Classic against Iowa, 69 to 46. A little bit later tonight, Evansville will take on Austin P. And the Bears had that matchup with Valparaiso. They will host Indiana State in the nightcap tonight. Da Daquan Miller to Kreklo for three. He does it again. Ryan Kreklo's fourth triple of the game. Veronish finishes with the left hand. That's a career high in points and a career high in threes made in a game for Ryan Kreklo. He'd had those four games with three threes before, and then 
Church goes up for the dunk and the foul. Obi with a head of steam here, but Mahoney sticks his hand up. So Church will go to the line here. Obadiah Church tonight, two for two at the free throw line. I mean, heck, only Chris Kendricks has got the lone miss tonight on the Bears free throw chart. And Obadiah Church did not want him to be alone in that fact, so. And as a team, the Bears came in shooting 68% from the charity stripe, 112 of 165 prior to this game. Their opponents were shooting 74% from the line. Church, a 57% free throw shooter, hits nothing on that one. It'll be Simo's ball, 422 to play. Bears up by 12, Red Hawks with the rock here. Coach Lusk just says, don't worry about a big guy, just play defense. And he does that as well as anybody. Good hand in the face of the Red Hawks shooter that time as he blocked Jamal Calvin. Missouri State crosses center court now. Dixon down the lane, bounces on the front of the rim, and Chinga with the board. His runner, that's his patented shot, missed that a little short. There's a two-handed flush for Antonius Cleveland. Cleveland wide open, and you just can't lose a score like Cleveland on a defensive switch. No, he is too quick, too athletic to do that. And here's another steal by the Red Hawks, their 13th of the game. Oh, and Cleveland just schooled Krecklow. Just schooled him, got past him, took it to the rack, schooled the non-conference uh, records with a 10 and two record, winning tonight the Ramblers and Porter Mosier, his second team in the Valley, doing real well at Loyola this year. That's quite a reclamation project that Porter Mosier has put together in Chicago as Antonius Cleveland converts the three-point play and it is 65 58 bears here with three and a half minutes to play this one has gotten a lot closer than when we started this second half Kreklo has it hands it off to ronnie russo kendricks and daquan miller collide missouri state patiently take this down inside 10 seconds on the shot clock Kendricks eyeing Church and his skip crack pass across the floor, intercepted by Milos Varanish. It's what happens when you try to cross the entire width of the court in one pass. Another Bears turnover, their 21st. Cleveland for three more, you betcha. Antonius Cleveland with 23 points to lead all scores, and it is a four-point game timeout Bears. Cleveland leading this club back. He had 11 points, 10 points at half. And you see some of the shooting numbers on your screen in the lower left-hand corner. Alize Johnson back into the ball game for the Bears. Johnson, and I can't even begin to figure out where I've got to look and find out when the last time he was held scoreless. I don't know that he ever It wasn't has. this season. I've, I've looked at that, figured we didn't have to look at zero yeah. points, but... He's done other things to help the team, namely rebounding. Rebounding, block shots, and now he'll have a chance again at the free throw line. Alizé Johnson is, has not attempted a free throw tonight. He is 0 for 1. He has one attempt on the night. It was a three. Bears lead by four, and Johnson misses the front end of a one and one here with two and a half to play. Paul Lusk said in the pregame that these Red Hawks would be prepared, even short-handed tonight. Look at this, wide open. Mahoney misses from point blank range, gets his own rebound. Obadiah Church and Alizé Johnson there, and it's Johnson who picks up the foul. You could not be any more open than what Mahoney was on the first shot we didn't see. He yep. got his own rebound playing volleyball, he missed it on one side, picked it up on the other, went back up. Well, it's tough to get a shot off between Johnson and Church, and the foul is gonna be called against Alizé. 
Mahoney, 16 points tonight. He is three for three at the free throw line. Make that four for four. When you look at foul trouble tonight, Mahoney and Chinga now both playing with four fouls for Southeast Missouri State. The Missouri State Bears, the home team on the scoreboard, they don't have a single player with four fouls, but Southeast Missouri State, Rick Ray's played nine, and the nine he has played is about the nine that he has healthy enough to play here tonight. Two minutes to go. Kreklow thought about a three, gives way to Miller. Obadiah Church at the free throw line. They flatten out for Daquan. Tries to take his man off the dribble, lays back, no good. Rebound to William Chinga. 100 seconds to go in this one. And it's a one possession game and it's an offensive foul. Cleveland can't believe it. Tough call there. Kreklow takes the charge on the baseline. There it is. He got in front of Cleveland who shakes his head, says nope. Well, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, as my father always used to tell me. But what it means now is Cleveland becomes the fourth Red Hawk with four fouls. The Bears have the ball in a two-point lead. Four fouls for Simons, Mahoney, Cleveland, and Benton has three. Most of those players are on the floor right now because that's what they've got. Ten seconds to shoot. Miller in front of his own bench. Kreklo with five seconds, with four, he's got to go, three, two, and he's fouled with two seconds left, and that's one of those unforgivable sins. You take the shot clock down that low, you 34. By Mahoney, did not see the reach. We were blocked, and the great camera action there. Kreklo goes to the line for free throws here. What a game he has played, a career-high 17 points for Ryan Kreklo. Didn't play much against Valpo. It's funny how you guys get in at various times, depending on the style of play. He misses one of two, and it's a three-point game. And that's a huge miss here with barely a minute to go. It could have been a two-possession game. Instead, driving the lane is Daniel Simmons. Rebound to Russo. Missouri State with a three-point lead in the ball here. 52 seconds to play. 20 on the shot clock, and Russo brings it all the way back to center court. Cleveland out. The Red Hawk superstar still standing on his own sideline. Kreklow drives again, kicks it out. Daquan for three! Yes, indeed! Daquan Miller hits, and the Bears lead 69-63. The answer on the other end, no good for the Red Hawks. Obadiah Church with the rebound. Great ball movement by the Bears to get the three-point shot by Miller. Low-look feed by Kreklow finding the wide-open three on the baseline for Daquan Miller, who knocks it down, and then a foul on the other side after the missed shot by Simo. Church with the rebound, and he is fouled immediately. A good guy to foul if you're Simo. Head coach Rick Ray knows his free throw percentage. He's hit two of four so far in the game. That's just below his average, two of five now. Obadiah, 57% free throw shooter. Leads the team in blocks. Has jumped up from number 11 to number nine all time on the Bears block shots list, passing Monwell Randall. Needs to get this one to go here. And it does, a friendly roll on the Bears home court. It's 70 to 63. Jamal Calvin picks it up. And they're going to adjust the clock. Officials did not like when the clock started based on rolling the ball up the court and when the player first touched it. So given Southeast Missouri State a little bit of time here, Missouri State makes a defensive substitution or changes out Alizé Johnson for Chris Kendricks. Jalen Benton brings it up. Red Hawks need to get a shot in a hurry. They do. That went up and in. And one, a fantastic drive and score for Jamal Calvin, the young man out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Took it right at Obadiah Church. Church straight up and down. 
Looked like he may have been ball. leaning a little bit, Corey. He was, wasn't a lot of contact. It's one of those late in the game that you, you probably swallow your whistle, but. Well, Obadiah Church has learned the hard way what a late foul in a game can do. It was Church that fouled All-American for Valparaiso and put Alec Peters on the free throw line for three, allowing Valparaiso to escape Springfield with a victory. Commits the foul here, Obadiah's fourth personal. And Jamal Calvin converts the three-point play here. 21.2 seconds to play, and it's a two-possession game. Four points, 70 to 66, Missouri State. And Missouri State now, Tom, has gone with a much smaller lineup. Look how many guards are on the floor for Missouri State. Reuter, Kreckla, Russo, Daquan Miller, along with Jared Dixon. As many as you can get out there, it's five. Okay. Five guards and five guys that can make their free throws. And the pass inside out with his game high, 23 points. Jalen Benton is now fouled out. His night will end with two points and five assists. A good night distributing the ball for Jalen Benton. Russo rips the first one. Ronnie Russo now with 16 points. Well, a 15-point halftime lead for Missouri State. Got down to two last minute of this game, but the Bears starting to separate a little bit now as Russo misses the free throw. And he screamed at it, hoping it would go back, but it didn't. Can the Red Hawks get a quick three or two here? Pass to Veronish, taken away by Miller. They're not able to foul. Miller walks it up. Daquan trying to dribble this one out, and Missouri State holds on for the 71-66 victory against the South